Oh my goodness. We are live. Good evening, everybody. I'm so excited. I'm so, 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 so excited about this evening's live. Um, uh, we have we have Osa here. Like, I'm just so, so excited that she could be a part of this series for reasons you're about to see yourself. Um, if you are watching with us live, please give us a sound check. Um, give us a sound check in the comment and tell us that you can hear us. That's very helpful to us. I'm always paranoid that like we're going on and on and people can't even hear us. So if anyone is here with us live right now, please do give us a comment to tell us you can hear us really well. Otherwise, I am so excited to welcome Osa on this live session where we are having the realest conversations about what this journey is like, what this process is like. I just wanted to start with you introducing yourself and letting the people know a little bit about you, please. Of course. First of all, thank you so much for that warm welcome. Aww. You're making me like so shy right now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, thank you so much. First of all, I just want to say, Dr. Chorori, that I love what you're doing with your platform, right? Um, just having these resources as an additional like resource for students who are interested in postdoctoral training yeah. is very, very beneficial for multiple reasons that 30 minutes is not enough to really talk about. Thank you. Um, it is my understanding that this is like a very informal yeah. conversation, you know, tete a tete and everything. So I just wanted to start by just giving a quick disclaimer that anything or like my opinions here today or whatever does not represent my company's opinion or that of the affiliated program. I mean, they're all great opinions, I would like to think. Yes, um, they are. <laughs> so nothing bad, nothing bad, but like just to put it out there, you know, Absolutely. As a you have to kind of separate that. So um, to answer your question, introduce myself. All right, so my name is Osama Bewagiren. I go by Osa. I am a first year doctor, uh, postdoctoral fellow <laughs> at um, UCB. Um, within the global patient safety function, um, basically what that functional area does is we do the end-to-end -end, um, patient safety, drug safety, device safety, risk management, and profiling of the company's product, right? To ensure that the patient is getting the most safe um, product out in the market. Um, it's a rotational program and it's really awesome. And I'm sure there'll be multiple like opportunities to talk about it in within this entire like talk. Yeah. Well, basically um, prior to that, I got my doctor of pharmacy degree from the Notre Dame of Maryland School of Pharmacy. Yeah, Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> and um, also before that, I obtained my bachelor's from the University of Massachusetts in um, biology and mathematics. Gosh. I had the opportunity of working before pharmacy school. So um, I worked at the MIT um, Broad Institute of Harvard in Massachusetts, Cambridge. So that was like my very first exposure to like biotechnology like company. They do different things, kind of like a genomic research yeah. um, thing, but it was a unique experience there. And um, I guess a fun fact or something I think is fun about myself is I am very entrepreneurial, like mindset person. Um, and I'm very, very heavy on like professional photography and videography. It's my thing. So uh -huh. I guess like when I'm not doing pharmacy things or like professional things, that's kind of how I unwind. I'm trying to make, you know, um, other streams of income as well as just create art. So yeah. Interesting. Did I just learn something new about you? Always. That is so cool. Okay. I'm not artistic. So like. You just blew my mind with that because I think a lot of people, the assumption is that if you're in the sciences, your passion, your hobbies are all related to that. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's so cool that you're interested you. in like visual art in that manner. Oh, I'm definitely calling you to talk to you. <laughs> I had no Thank idea you. about that. That's really, really cool. Um, so Osa, like, I think that part of one of the things that always fascinates me are people that have like 
such a clear sense of purpose. Like it's very clear to them, like they know their mark. It's very clear, like they know what they are trying to accomplish, what they want to do. I'm curious, like as far as your selection process or your decision-making process in identifying fellowship as the next logical step in your professional career, where did that start? Did you have a, a moment or you just had like, was there a slight interest that got solidified over time? I think it would be beneficial for like the up and coming students to just hear about how did you pick this area and said, this is going to be it and we're going to go. I think that's a really great question. And I think everyone should actually know their why, right? Yeah. Um, for those who don't know, some people know, I, I consider myself a global citizen because I have lived on three continents. Yeah. That kind of like exposed me to healthcare and the disparities that exist between them, yeah. right? But that I didn't know all of this going into pharmacy school. Mm -hmm. So um, I went to Notre Dame, right? And they're very heavy on professionalism, very clinically driven, you know? So all I really knew or all, all that we learned or were, like taught as pharmacy students is kind of residency yeah. or um, community, which there's nothing wrong with that. It's really, it's perfect. Yeah. Now, you know, you, you hear people saying, um, excuse me, oh, I don't want to go into that field. I don't want to go into that field. Um, but I think the heavy clinical emphasis in my program really set me up really good yeah. um, because a lot of people think that, yes, you're in industry, so it's not the most clinical place. Yeah. And that's not really the fact. No. Yeah. Also, I like to be considered as a high value woman in my personal life and professional life. That's so great. I'm always seeking opportunities to kind of make myself um, be, a, be able to like add value to, wh to wherever space I am at. Yeah. So in pharmacy school, what I did and how I kind of came to this conclusion of going the fellowship route is I kind of like tried everything, yeah. right? So as a first year pharmacy student, my school was very strict in terms of if you don't get like good grades, you'll be kicked out, right? Mm -hmm. And I hold, I have very high expectations for myself. So yeah. I'm, I don't want to get kicked out, but yeah. I also don't want to ever beg for my grade, yeah. right? Absolutely. Um, and that's just that like, I don't want to put that decision in somebody else's hands. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Can I say something real quick since it's like kind of informal, yeah? Absolutely. <laughs> is so I love dressing up. If you <laughs> down, then you know that I love dressing up. At my school, you have to dress professionally every single time. And I really love that about that, right? Literally, the world will be burning. I will still wear my heels and dress up and go to class. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm making banter with my friends. We're joking. And my first my first year of pharmacy school, I'm like, it would be really sad if I get a bad grade or put myself in a situation where I have to beg. And then it would probably be like, oh, yeah, you should have studied more, but you were dressing up. <laughs> Oh my God! You came so, right for your life, like you. Should, yeah. I'm sure nobody, nobody was thinking about that. That's just like in my head. So that was something that kept me going, right? I don't want to put myself in any situation yeah. that will require certain things. Mm -hmm. But also, that pushed me more to uncomfortable situations. Yeah. While in pharmacy school, I worked three jobs, not together, right? Yeah. Um, it started with my first EP rotation in a community setting, mm -hmm. and then after my six. It was um, throughout the entire semester. After that, I basically was offered a job as an intern. Mm -hmm. So I stuck with it and learned like everything that had to do in the community setting. Yeah. Going into it, I um, also got like another job um, during my second year of pharmacy school. I just went for the interview. It was a very unique experience. Um, it was in a closed pharmacy. So I'm like, this is really nice because in pharmacy school, you want to really see the different areas. Yes. That's the only way you can tell what you don't like, like what yeah. you like, yeah. right? I feel like it's good to talk to people, but through experience, you're better able to 
like emphasize why you want something else when you've been exposed to that thing. So mm -hmm. I did that. And then um, during my app rotations, which obviously that's how I formally like officially met you, yeah. um, my emergency medicine like rotation, after my app rotation, I got retained as a student pharmacist in the e, like in the ER, right? Yeah. So I have all these diverse experiences, yes. both in pharmacy school and like out of pharmacy school. I have a global um, background. And one thing that I really love that just kind of was consistent is the fact that I would do projects and researches and everything was focused on safety. Yeah. I really love working with pro like on a project-based um, yeah. work, clinical work. So it's kind of through these experiences, putting all the pieces together and being able to have an impact on a global level, seeing how Personally, I'm from, you know, just a global scape. It's there. <laughs> and I knew that, yes, I have a PharmD. I would like to use some of my clinical knowledge. And mm -hmm. um, as pharmacists, by training, we are very unique in, like, our unique, like, place in healthcare is that safety Absolutely. where like in the ER, right? At the yeah. hospital, yeah. right? You have physicians, like nurses, everyone asking the pharmacist, like, oh, can we give this dose? Is there any like drug, drug interaction, things like that. And it just was natural to me and it felt very familiar to me. And then I decided to go that route in terms of within the um, pharmaceutical industry. Yeah. That's, I, how I got there. Uh, that's how you got to. So I think like also um, I was talking about diversity um, with uh, Sakina Kazmi, who's at Ibsen right now. And I think like her and I, we kind of share this really similar ideas about what diversity really means. And the fact that for a lot of people, diversity, we go to race, gender, orientation, representation, but in the sciences, we have to elevate the conversation of diversity more mm -hmm. in that diversity of background, diversity of thought, culture. Until we are getting people in these functional areas that have seen in three different continents what disparities look like and what the opportunities that exist to improve safety, access, and all these different things, we're not able to elevate the conversation to the levels that they could go because if everybody in the room shares one singular background, the conversation stays like right here. So like, as you're talking, like from your job experience after school to all of the things that you really, you, it just sounds like you didn't say no to anything. You stayed open. <laughs> well, um, I, I, I like to think that I'm a very intentional person. Yeah. I don't I don't take everything that's put on my plate, mm -hmm. but I do keep an open mind because um, in my head, I'm like, I really do want to have experiences. And it was kind of like a strategy, too, yeah. um, because at a time I re I knew very early that I wanted to do safety. Gotcha. I think, you know, but the safety is like medical medical safety, like medication safety in the hospital. Gotcha. Right. Um, so, because that is what we have the like immediate access to. Absolutely. So I knew I wanted to do safety at, at like any level, yeah. but the thing is, I just wasn't like really sure yeah. in terms of how I would do that because I have really high asp like aspirations, goals for myself. Yeah. And I really want to have a high impact in a very large, like level in life, yeah. professionally, yeah. personally. So I do that by, you know, ha like having experiences and just putting yourself strategically in different uncomfortable spaces yeah. that will breed and build your skills. For yeah. example, um, it's kind of the thing where I didn't know specifically the field, but I knew I wanted to do safety. One, two is in my head, like you talk to P4s at the time and they're like, when you do your appies, your opinion might change, right? Yeah. So I don't want to be a P4 scrambling at the last minute because I wanted to be in this field. So my mindset throughout pharmacy school was like, do as much as you can with so much quality, yeah. right? And that way, if you have any change last minute, you're still going to remain a very competent candidate for any field you go into. 
Diversifying your portfolio. Yes. <laughs> it's, a, it's a real strategy out there. And I hope that if there are any P1s or P2s listening, they are really, really picking up on what you are talking about. What Osa is pointing out here is that she's clear. She was very clear about what she wanted. She was selective about the experiences, but stayed open. And just in case if her interests changed along the way, she could still sit down and feel confident about the package she was putting forward because her experiences were very diverse and impactful. Like this is very, very important because it's true. It happens to students. They get to block three, block four, and they fall in love with a functional area that they'd never even heard existed. And now they're kind of stuck. But when they think back to their P1, P2, P3 year, there were opportunities to at least dibble and dabble, perhaps a little project here, a little project there, so that they could learn about that area. I really hope that you guys are hearing what's coming through right now. Diversifying your portfolio will absolutely never hurt you as you move forward in each of your endeavors. Um, and so as you began applying for fellowships, like, did you have any reservations at all? I think that it's good for prospective candidates, like people that are knee deep in right now. They like anyone you talk to, they are so nervous, they are so anxious. And everybody, even some of the most competitive and highly qualified candidates, you hear such uncertainty in their voice. Um, I would love to know how you navigated that season of application season and how did you kind of move forward and trusting and you, you've talked about intentionality a little bit but if you could talk to us a little bit about what this application season was like for you and how you navigated it um to stay positive and but also super intentional about what you knew you deserved so that's a really like that's a great question so just so i'm clear this is for the people applying to this cycle right now, not like P1s, P2s. Oh, P2s, people. yeah. People that are in the trenches right now. All right. So um, I can't tell you not to be nervous because yeah. you're going to be, I was. Um, I think, first of all, the first, because I'm thinking at this point, yeah, you, people are already getting ready for interviews. Yeah. So I'm just going to skip the part about getting your application materials together. And let's talk about the interviews. As long as you get an interview, then it's like it's up to you how, you know, your chances of moving forward. Yeah. Um, so basically, I think it's very important to be very to be self-aware as a human being in general. Yeah. Um, being self-aware, especially very early on, helped me a lot. Like I knew my strength and my weaknesses. Like mm -hmm. I'm continuously working on myself mm -hmm. because, you know, you get to different spaces and it requires a higher self. Yeah. Right? So you need to continuously work on yourself. So what that means is when you are someone that you're self-aware and you know your weaknesses, you can target your weaknesses yeah. to help you get like, better get prepared you know when you're studying for netflix yeah, they're like oh if you know a if you know a, a chapter skip that chapter because <laughs> if you focus on your strength then you're not helping yourself so you have this false sense of preparation and then you're not nope. so i think having a, a a sense of like awareness and self is very important one and this is specific to the interview two is preparedness which you get through mentorship yeah right and that's why i started by saying being self-aware because if you know that this is my weakness then you are going to target a mentor that's really strong in that area yeah so i did different things right i wasn't comfortable i mean early on in pharmacy school i was nervous of public speaking mm. um, because i used to speak really fast I have a more thicker accent and I'm like, oh my gosh, people can't hear me. And I don't like that. And that made me feel like a certain way. And I'm like, no, but I had to snap out of it. I'm like, Osa, you are going to do great things. Yes, you are. Not what we're going to do. Yes, okay? you are. <laughs> so, 
you know, I met my professor at the time and she literally pushed me into applying to like local positions in, within Notre Dame. And it kind of happened somehow that I ended like on a national level in terms of positions, but whatever. Yeah. So it's, you build on your weaknesses and you just kind of get better because where focus grow, uh, goes is where it's going to grow. Yeah. Right? So I think if you know that, then you can prepare for that. Two, four or three, anyways, for the interview, right? Yeah. Everyone is so focused on like whether or not they have an industry experience prior. Yeah. So let me just say this. When I accepted my position with my company, I hadn't done my appy rotation in industry. Hmm. So it's very important to know the value of what you have mm-hmm. and be very articulate as to why that experience, you know, um, benefits the experience, like the, the position you are going to apply for. Yeah. Um, everyone's always trying to show their best self. Like, um, you know, I did this, I schooled this, you know, dropping names and yeah. Them, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think this is a strategy I used and um, I had a lot of mentors, so yeah. it wasn't like one effort. It was just like continuous effort, which I really Absolutely. appreciate them for it. Um, when you know your value, yeah, you need to know the company. Mm-hmm. And then any question you're answering, you need to bring it back to how what you're offering can benefit the company. Absolutely. So for example, right? So I, 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 just the random question was like, oh, you know, tell me what you do as a pharmacy school. So obviously I'm going to say, oh, I'm an entrepreneurial, you know, <laughs> I'm a business woman. I have this, 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 mm-hmm. and I have a strong pipeline, you know, use those words, right? Yeah. Strong pipeline of da da da. Yeah. And yes, it's not clinical, but then it's I've been able to learn like how to speak with vendors or yeah. things like that, which um, it doesn't really matter like what function you're going to. Um, industry in itself is clinical and business together. Yes. So um, every answer, I'll be like, I think that is very valuable because looking at the structure of the program, the first rotation, I'm really learning the core, which in, in, like includes case processing. And then I'm exposed to like vendors or da da da. So yeah. I already have the skills that will help the team whenever it's needed. I yep. feel like don't be too focused on just showing that you're the best. Show that you're the best, but how does the best benefit the company and the team? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm like saying yes, yes, yes. Because, so, because it's the biggest, it's like you talk to people and then as, as I'm working with them for interview prep, I learned that they have a full blown business that they have been running since they were undergrad and they have, and I'm just like, why is this nowhere in the conversation? Like, about yourself like how did we not come out of the gate swinging with this information first like we've been here for like an hour prepping and i'm just now learning that you have this whole thing where you have skills in business plan relationship establishment Mm -hmm. like innovative program development sustainability development and sustainability plan strategy implementation like this is a big deal if you're going into a pharmaceutical industry period uh, oh my God, that's, that's really, really important. Yeah, I think um, that everyone has a PharmD. I think that's the minimum like requirement for the exactly. PharmD fellowship program. So if there's something about you that you can set yourself apart, um, it really helps. Okay. And um, you don't have to do too much, right? And sometimes what's normal to us is really unique to others. So that's why it's good to practice and prepare. And to be honest, when I was preparing like for my interviews, I mean, this was prior to the application opening. I would reach out to a lot of like fellows on LinkedIn. I wanted to get their personal experiences before it got hectic. But also this is the tactic I use. And I am just sharing this very freely, guys. Um, I worked on my elevator pitch for like six months. Yes, you can. approximately until it got perfect because yep. I'm very extra in that. <laughs> but um, what I would do is, except it was very like, we're very crunched on time or I really wanted to know like very heavy. And 
it depends. Some some fellows are really busy, so you don't really get that banter vibe. So I just go straight to it. But everything, every time I do, every time I, I request um, a meeting, I always start by introducing myself. And literally, I always use the same, tell me about yourself. Yes. I use that as a tactic for more practice for whenever interviews get there. Yep. But also, I was very like, I try to read the people. Like, mm-hmm. if I tell you, if I introduce myself in the first one and a half minutes, I will read your face. Like, what did I say about myself? that you found fascinating like ooh. that they responded to mm-hmm. or your eyebrows because not everyone is like expressive and things. yeah so I just really look at you and I'm maintaining eye contact and I saw like you maybe like a smile or yeah. like da, da, da. then when I'm done I literally mark it I'll yeah. be like okay that was interesting and then when I did this for like a, a month or two and I kind of like people would respond to like certain things in my head. I'm like, that is so normal, but okay. But then I added that, you know, that particular, you know, part of my, tell me about yourself to my like introduction during my interviews. Yeah. And I mean, it's true because you've, you've known yourself your entire life. So you can be doing exceptionally well and so unique in so many ways. Yeah. And you're like, ah, that's just Osa. But then if I tell you that, oh, so I do this, you're like, okay yeah (laughs) that's that's one way there's such a thing as being overly modest it could hurt you like what you're saying as that everybody has a farm d and this takes a little bit of time and getting prospective candidate to elevate their mindset to realizing like where they are like the arena that they are now in Everybody is going to meet the entry level requirement. PharmD from an accredited school of pharmacy, GPA cutoff, whatever the, whatever X Y Z. Everybody that's getting an interview offer has kind of made it through that entry level. You are now at the stage of picking things up a notch. Mm-hmm. That only happens with individuality and a very clear, and I mean like crystal clear ability to articulate with absolute certainty what makes you different, what makes you an asset, what makes you a fit, what you contribute to the company. Everybody prepares so much to come and tell the interviewer how the company is super awesome and everything the company is going to do for them. And I'm constantly just like, okay, that's great. You know them. You've done the work. You know them very well. How do we make sure that they also get to know you and know you very well? So it's like everything you're talking about just goes right to the heart of that case. And I hope someone who's watching this can really get to benefit from this. I really want to get to like this thing about you because I'm so excited about your recent announcement, your recent announcement on LinkedIn for a promotion. (laughs) Please tell us us what just, what just happened for you um, and what this means um, and I'm just excited. I was like, I need to learn more about this, but I'm going to wait to learn with everybody at the same time. Oh my gosh. (laughs) First of all, thank you so much. Um, For those that don't know, so my program, UCB, um, that's where I'm having my postdoctoral fellowship right now. First of all, the applications is already open. The deadline is October 24th. It is the best like program ever, literally. Like, and I said, this is my opinion, yeah? So... Um, they really do a really great job. And please, anyone can reach out to me. They need more information. Do that. Um, All right. So it's in conjunction with the IPHO, um, you know, organization, right? Um, When I started the fellowship, I started the fellowship as a DEI co-lead. And my co-lead partner. What is DEI? P1's in the house, P2's in the house. What is DEI? (laughs) Um, Okay, so basically it's um, diversity, equity, and, you know, um, equality, basic, um, including access. Because, yes, you may know, you may not know, but the pharmaceutical industry is really not the most diverse um, space for people of color right now. And I really love the fact that IPHO is... Um, focusing so much on that and to make like resources to yeah. support people of color that want to um, pursue a pharmaceutical industry pathway at, mm-hmm. as a career. That's so awesome. um, I started that position 
before I actually graduated pharmacy school. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so basically, the gist is I was already working um, as a fellow before I got my PharmD. Of course, because you, you are that boss. Of, of course, um, you are. Well, let me just say I was uh, my co lead partner, Kevin Darko. He's awesome. Um, we did like we worked together from February until until well, my recent promotion. And obviously, it's very important to have someone who sees the same passion and has the same drive to to make results. Um, anyways, um, what it means now is I have been promoted to a co, a, a co chief fellow for the entire national fellow council. Yeah. And how that would have happened was, um, it wasn't something I applied for. It <laughs> came to me because yeah. as I would like to say, and very humbly, I might, I have to add, um, my name came up because of the quality of work I have done with, the project being, you know, one of the co-leads for DEI. Very so um, I was approached <laughs> about that position and I kind of thought about it really hard because as a fellow, I also want to be able to have a high impact in my company. Yeah. But I also, there are a lot of things I want to do that is very important, like, it's good to want to get things, but sometimes it's just perfect to give, right? Yeah. And as a mentor yeah. um, through the IPHO and at a higher level, yeah. I'm able to do that. And what does that mean for you or me professionally is that for you to be a mentor, you would need to kind of know something better to be able to transfer that knowledge, whatever that is to Absolutely. somebody else and that actually goes to my one of my goals as a professional and personally to kind of be a high value person yes ma'am right? and i want to inspire people i want to show people that you can have a completely normal social life i don't know if my friends will argue with this because <laughs> Um, you know, you I, can love, be- I love how self-aware you are. Like this is playing out in real time. <laughs> I, just, I am enjoying this to no end. It's like, I don't know if my friends would agree, but this is what I'm seeing. So um. <laughs> uh, well, I really love what they do. And with that position, I'm able to, with the rest of the team, foster and create a more stronger, like fellow community. Right. Yeah. Um, IPHO, like, you know, we have the bigger, um, fellow like um what's it called programs and they have a stronger network but yeah. also you have fellows that are in standalone companies right or they're from small schools like myself yeah. you know not everyone went to like a hbcu i know i didn't and mm-hmm. i know that i had to go out there put myself um in uncomfortable positions to learn and kind of develop myself in certain ways yeah. and I want to do that through this position with my co-chiefs. So um, how that works is, you know, we just build networking, right? We have webinars, we have development um, opportunities, professional development, really. And that when you're, I feel like when you're professionally developed, it's, it kind of, it goes through your entire life, like your personal life and everything. So I can go through the entire list, but basically the goal is to kind of build and foster a stronger community of like, strong and well-connected um, network of strong farm um, industry pharmacists. I and that's it. my goal, you know, in future, I want to be one of the best in the field of um, industry, like within pharmacy pr- um, profession. And I know I, I'm going to be, so I want to be able to have that impact on people that coming up because people that were, that came before me really helped me through yeah. supporting me by yeah. mentorship. And I want to give back. I love it. I don't know if y'all are paying attention because I want to be one of the best in the pharmaceutical <laughs> industry and I will be. Do you like her body language literally matches the words that are coming out of her mouth? There's like a certain level of conviction and, and just intentionality with that, that you can't teach that, Osa. You can't teach that. I just want you to know, like, you can't teach that. That's that's so awesome. I'm so excited for you. I saw the promotion. I didn't reach out to learn anything about it because I wanted you to share it with the, with the entire group of people who are going to see this. Um, I keep asking everybody this one question at the end because I think it's super important. Everybody's journey is so unique and different. We could literally have identical titles 
-hmm. and how we got there, <laughs> how we got there would be completely different. Mm -hmm. So I've been calling it like wisdom from the journey. Like what is something that for everybody here, prospective candidates, the P1, the P2s, um, the new practitioners that are interested in crossing over, what is something from your journey that you would want to share with anybody who's interested in getting in this line of work or in this area of functionality within the pharmaceutical industry? Mm, I would say that um, have, have a sense of urgency mm. um, with everything that you do. Yeah. Because that's one thing, because <laughs> I really started preparing for my process a, during my P3 year. Yeah. And I think, you know, people are always like, why are you in a rush, Osa? Like, you're just a P3, like, you still have a whole year and stuff like that. But I think that's also where the self-awareness piece comes yeah. in, because it's like, I already knew, honestly, that I was at a disadvantage. I didn't have my IP experience yet in industry. Yeah. I didn't even have an IPHO in my school. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I needed, like I needed literally that whole year. Yeah. Okay. To build myself. Right. So what happened that year? I did three research projects. Right. Mm -hmm. I just intentionally would do things that will develop or sharpen certain skills. Yeah. So actually maybe I would put like have a sense of urgency for yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, a second, the first would be to have like a clear goal, yeah, of what you want. Clarity and of goals. This <laughs> on the clear, yeah. because your goal for a professional life is not the same as a personal life. So I personally, the way I do it is, I have different buckets, mm -hmm. right? So I have a career goal, um, so academic goal, right? So um, academically, um, physically, financially. Mm -hmm. um, every other alley, yeah. okay? So um, my business and just, I separate them. Yeah. And then what are, the, what are the goals? I I'm someone who really goes in detail. Mm -hmm. So it's a blessing and a curse. So what I start with is I break things in two. So what are my two major goals in each bucket? Yeah. And then I Google a lot. I do a lot of like research. Yeah. So what are the skills I would require? to meet said goals yeah. and then which of them am I liking? Like which of these goals, which of these skills do I, that I need to get these goals am I lacking in? Yeah. Um, by doing that, I'm able to kind of like a, do like a targeted therapy, if you want to call it. <laughs> you and your analogies, I'm done. <laughs> you know, because, oh, let me do another one. Because also you don't want, sometimes the rate limiting step is you. It's you. <laughs> It really is you. You, so, your mind. you don't know if you want to go or stay. Mm -hmm. you don't know if you're about it or if you're around it, mm -hmm. the great limiting step is really and truly you. That's a fact. Exactly. So when you know the skills you need to get to your goals, mm -hmm. then you see, oh, I, I'm strong in this. I'm strong in this. I definitely need this. Then you can start from there. I think just breaking things into buckets, um, really helps yeah you know because when you work on you i think people just want to work on it if you work on yourself you get better every day and you become your you kind of have more value to add to your personal life to your yeah. friends to mm -hmm. your company and i'm very like i think futuristically mm -hmm. i wouldn't want to you know hassle for like jobs when nope. i'm done with my fellowship how do I keep that energy is I always try to keep on developing myself because if my company or ever or anyone's company or like if you're in a place where your company know they know your worth, mm -hmm. they will never let you go. No. That and that's it. Like it doesn't really matter what the economy is saying right now. The entire market is crashing. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, but if you you kind of work on yourself to have high value to support the team, yeah. um, I think it will be very good. And lastly lastly, I think this is very important is I know people say work smart and not hard. Um, no. Speak on it. Please <laughs> speak on it. 
please so, speak <laughs> on it and speak on it in great, great detail. Please. Um, I think that I'm in a very, I'm in a very like a formative years of my career. Like I'm a young professional. So I'm not in a place yet. Like I have a lot of things I want to do. I'm not in a place yet where I can work smart. And really you have to work hard to learn how to be efficient enough to work smart. So, it's a place you get to people. It's, it's <laughs> not a place you just wake up and right. style. It's exactly. a place that you get to. Oh my mm -hmm. God. So um, <laughs> a lot of times people are like, I, I would go off social media for like extended period of times. I would go like MIA because I really need to focus on certain things. And I try my best to like communicate with people around me. Like, you know, I, I'm trying to focus on certain projects and I just need like on my own divided attention to be given to this. And I think um, people just think that, well, you're working too hard. But sometimes it's, it's called like growing pains, right? But it's like deliberate um, extremes. You have to be deliberately extreme sometimes when you're really young in the phase where you want to be yeah. so that way you really learn the core of the knowledge yeah. and then you gain and build skills that will make you more efficient yeah. and then later in life or later maybe like three two years or whatever you'll be chilling because you'll be working efficiently okay. and working smarter with the same quality yeah. right um but when it comes to what when you're learning like in pharmacy school as a fellow yes you have a fellowship but you still want to put your head down and really learn the work so when you're really practicing your the work you're doing is quality it's not really about the amount the quality of the work that you do absolutely so that's that's, what I have to say. Girl, girl, that's like so many gems you dropped there like it's work smart and not hard and i'm always like no that's very dangerous advice for students that's very dangerous advice for new practitioners. It's dangerous advice for people that are in those formative years and developmental phases of their professional career. Mm -hmm. Working hard does not kill anybody. Nope. It builds character. You're learning, you're growing, you're in an uncomfortable space. The outcome of which, in my personal experience, has never been negative. The outcome of my hard work has always led to something phenomenal at the mm -hmm. end of it. So, I am with the group that says working smart and not harder. It's a place that we get to. It's not just because I've, I see somebody who's been in a clinical specialist for 10 years working smart, not hard. And I'm in my first two years as a clinical specialist. And I believe like I'm also there. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. You're not. <laughs> no, ma'am. You're not. Like it's a place that you get to and it, it comes with a lot of hard work, mm -hmm. sacrifice, and you find yourself having to explain some of those decisions of why this is where my focus is right now and not that. But ultimately, your friends, your true friends who know you and respect you, they they will respect those boundaries mm -hmm. if the, you just need to be left alone right now to focus on this one thing because you're headed somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, I am so- Even you don't have, you know? Yeah. And you 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 are able to pour more if yeah. your cup is filled. So your you need to focus on filling your cup, so that way you can fill mm -hmm. others. And your your people will love you more if mm -hmm. you have more to offer. And that's just it. That's just it. It's 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 really true. Um, I'm putting something out into the universe right now. But let's say when the Hunger Games is all over and whatever, I want to reconnect again. <laughs> Conversation. This conversation's gotten so good. <laughs> I'm working on a group of people that I want to reconnect with and have a live for all of the brown and black sisters that are going to be going through residency interviews in January and February about showing up in their truest, authentic selves. And I want them to hear from some women that are truly unapologetic and how they show up in their professional lives every day to kind of encourage them. It's one thing to hear from one little person, but if you have a panel of women that are living in their truest authentic self day after day, and they're telling you it's going to be okay, there's a certain level of assurance that comes with that. Um, so this is not the last of me you've seen or heard yet, ma'am. Thank, Thank you so much. So much. Yeah, I really appreciate the opportunity, right, to um, give back 
yeah. and also just share my journey and things like that. And I'll obviously be very happy to join you in the future um, and help other people, yeah. be, you know, coming up. So, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Osa. Osa, is, um, she says her LinkedIn inbox is open, guys. I would say <laughs> blow that thing up. Um, be mindful that she is a fellow, so her schedule could be hectic, but be mindful, um, be respectful, and kind of just reach out. You're never going to know who has something to contribute to you if you're so afraid of rejection and never take that step to just reach out. Um, I, I want to encourage you to reach out to a lot of the people I've talked to this week. Everybody's just super open to you reaching out. Don't, don't be so scared of rejection that you miss an opportunity for some really invaluable mentorship that you can get, whether you're in the beginning of your pharmacy career or you're a little bit more further along. Thank you so much, Osa. Please have a wonderful rest of your evening. Thank you. Bye, Sam. Bye, honey.